one, two.
one two one two one two one two one two can you hear me one two one two one two one two three four good morning one two three four hello hello hear me? One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. One, two.
beseech thee to behold with thy abundant favor us thy servants whom thou hast been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in the commonwealth of Dominica. Let thy blessing descend upon us here in this parliament assembled and grant that we may, as in thy presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote thy honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. All which we ask in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. Obituary and congratulatory remarks. I rise, Madam Speaker, to extend uh, my deepest sympathies um, on behalf of my family and the other members of this side to the family of Dr. Kelsick. Um, excuse me. Obituary remarks and, and congratulatory remarks are for members and members' families, okay? Uh, yeah. We can't have members rising for their constituents. It would never end, okay? Right. I've, um, I made that ruling at the last meeting. Yeah, but Madam Speaker, this is not very abnormal, especially for someone... Who um, I am telling you the rule that I have established. But Thank you. Okay. Um, there have been no obituary or congratulatory remarks. Yeah. Yes? Yes, Madam Speaker. Is it a member of Parliament? Yes, Madam Speaker. It's a yes. Of Parliament. Madam Speaker, I stand here to congratulate um, all my fellow colleagues. Miss Model um, Williams is now Mrs. Model John Baptist on her marriage. Right. <laughs> Anybody else wish to congratulate the member on her nuptials? I would like to do so. That, oh, there, there's the member for um, yes. St. Joseph, Honorable Minister. <laughs> yes, Madam Speaker. Um, I too want to add my congratulations to Mrs. John Baptist. Um, on her on her process of being newly wed, I wish you all the best and success and God's blessings in your your marriage. Congratulations to you, <clears throat> Madam Speaker. I to rise to congratulate Honourable Williams, Monel Williams, on this bold step and breath. John Monel Williams, John Baptist, on this bold and brave step. I wish you all the best. I know you're a family person, concerned for your children, and as minister responsible for family affairs, I'm very elated by the step that you have taken. May God guide you, protect you, bless you and your family. I wish you joy, Madam Speaker, in extending congratulations to Mrs. John Baptist for this bold move, she, had set, she has set an example for some members of this parliament who, have, <laughs> who, are, slow, who are slow in moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. I'm certain, Madam Speaker, that um, uh, <laughs> I'm certain, Madam Speaker, okay. that her, um, her step would encourage others to do the same. Congratulations, Mrs. John Baptist. I, oh. Madam Speaker, just, just quickly to, to say that we warmly welcome Senator Honorable Monel Williams John Baptiste into the family of happily married people. And God bless her efforts always. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to add to the sentiments expressed and to wish Honorable Williams John Baptiste a very happy marriage and long life to both partners and may they continue in a close family relationship. I don't know if she wants to respond. Madam Speaker, on behalf of my husband and myself, aye, I, aye, wanna aye. Say, <laughs> I want to say a very special thank you to all the members of this honorable house for the congratulatory messages. We will indeed 
and show that we put God first in this, our marriage. Thank you very much. Next item. Confirmation of minutes of, of meeting of Tuesday 1st, Wednesday 2nd, and Thursday 3rd May 2018. Madam Speaker, uh, where it says anyone wishing to make such an appointment may do so with the clerk, but in the absence, Miss Hall or Miss Bertrand. Um, I'm not sure, Madam Speaker, if that's a norm or whether we should qualify who is Miss Paul or who is Miss Bertrand in minutes. So say Miss Paul or Miss Bertrand. Well, um, I think they're known to most members, but if you wish, we can add the, the, the uh, other officers. <laughs> or any other officer, yeah, something like that because right, um, with the member's permission we can just add, or any other um, officer, is that okay? Right, so if we will so Madam, add. Madam Speaker, I think we have a small, well, I'm not sure, on, on page five, the second paragraph, our speaker in reply said that it was not within her view. Her view? Yeah, so I'm not sure. I think that just too small. What, what um, paragraph? Oh yes, I see it. Second, um, sec um, thing. Her, I think her is missing there too, we, within her purview. Okay, so any other um, corrections, deletions, and so on? Okay then. Um, do we have a seconder? There was a seconder to the motion of the minutes. Okay. It has been moved and seconded that the minutes of the meeting of Tuesday 1st, Wednesday 2nd, and Thursday 3rd, May 2018 be amended as indicated. Those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. Just before you. Speaker, like, uh, is that okay? Um, who, is, who is doing it? Okay, go ahead. Madam Speaker, I want to give this honorable host um, notice that. Um, um, is it there? Why? Yes, this bill, Anti Terrorism Act 2018. Yes. Um, I shall be proceeding to, to do only the first reading and not all three stages as contained on the other people. Okay, so, so. Yeah. Um, I, what I'm gathering is that the member is asking that the order paper be amended um, to delete the second and third readings of the. Okay. It has been moved and seconded that um, the second and third reading of the um, the uh, yeah, I'm looking for it. Oh yes, there, here it is. Um, the, the, not the Customs Act, the other one, which is the, to, the, the criminal, the, I'm not, item 11, okay, okay, so for the, an act to criminalize terrorism and, but where's the name of the act, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, let me let me look for the act itself. Okay, it's the Anti-Terrorism Act, isn't it? Right. So that the second and third reading of the Anti-Terrorism Act be adjourned. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. The um, order paper stands amended to that extent. Right. Next.
announcements by speaker. Okay, I, I just have two announcements. Um, the first is that I received a letter from the Honorable Prime Minister. Um, do I have the member's permission to read in, in, in silence from the floor? Thank you. Uh, yes, as I was saying, I received a letter from the Honorable Prime Minister, um, which I shall read for you. Dear Honorable Speaker, greetings to you and the clerk. I write to inform you that I will be absent from the sitting of the House commencing Monday, June 25th, as I will be out of state on very critical official business. Grateful if you would be kind enough to favorably consider approving my absence. I wish you well as you carry out your duties. May God bless and keep you. Sincerely, Honorable Roosevelt, Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister. And then there's the a second one which I just received. And it is from... Oh, it's, it's apparently it's a copy of the, honor, the one from the Honorable Prime Minister. So it's, it's the same thing. So um, apart from saying that um, I'm hoping that this meeting um, follows the pattern of our last meeting when it went pretty well, let us hope that um, the way members conducted their business at the last meeting um, is carried out in the same fashion today. Um, that's all for my announcements. Can we continue with the order paper, please? Government notices. M Madam Speaker, I beg to move that at a later stage of this proceedings, I'll be moving the motion standing in my name on the order paper. Second, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I have beg to give notice that at the later stage of this proceeding, I will be taking all the stages of the Custom Amendment Act 2018, the Advanced Passenger Information System Act 2018, and the first reading of the Anti-Terrorism Act 2018, standing in my name on the other people. Statements by ministers. Introduction of bills. Speaker, I move the bill shortly entitled the Custom Amendment Act 2018 be read the first time. Seconded. Customs Amendment Act 2018. The bill has been read the first time. Madam Speaker, I move. The second reading of the bill shortly entitled the Customs Amendment Act 2018. Seconded. I know, let me make sure I have the right bill. Madam Speaker, the amendment to the Customs Act is now being presented to this Honorable House. No, 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 yes, read all. You have to read huh? all the bills. Hmm? Speech. Madam Speaker, has the rule changed?
we are under the introduction of bills. Yes. We have to do all the first readings first. Huh? Okay, Madam Speaker. Right, yes. so we're doing the, all the first readings first. Okay, all right. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill. I'm oh, sorry, that's it. Uh, one specific. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill shortly entitled Advanced Passenger Information System Act 2018 be read the first time. Yes. Advanced Passenger Information System Act 2018. The bill has been read the first time. Okay, next one. Madam Speaker, I move the second reading of the bill shortly entitled the Custom Amendment Act 2018. No, second reading. No, no, first, we're doing all the first readings. We are under introduction of bills. So we have to do the first reading of the third one now. Yes, that's the procedure. And because we, we have to do motions first anyway. Motions come before bills um, are read anyway. So you have to do the first reading of the, the, the... Madam Speaker, I move the bill shortly entitled the Anti-Terrorism Act 2018 be read the first time. Second it. Anti-Terrorism Act 2018. The bill has been read the first time. Public business, government business motion. Madam Speaker, the authorization for a credit facility from the International Development Association for funding of housing recovery project. Madam Speaker, Section 3.1 of the Loans Act, Chapter 645 of the 1990 Revised Laws of the Commonwealth of Dominica, amended by Section 4 of the Loans Amendment Act 4 of 1996, authorizes the Minister with the responsibility for finance to borrow money or guarantee loans for approved sources on behalf of the government for the purpose of financing general development or for the purpose in any foreign House of Assembly.
monitoring processes. Detailed design for a new physical development planning office incorporating resilience and multiple hazards. Supporting the form that were classified as destroyed. Eligible owners are to use the grant and their own and their own resources, if necessary, to undertake the rebuilding works. Approximately 1,700 eligible homeowners will be provided with a subsidy in the form of $42,000 grant, that's EC, or 16,000 US. Design and supervision services for the reconstruction works for the eligible, eligible beneficiaries. The establishment and operation of a project implementation unit and an implementation support team. Madam Speaker, this loan is consistent with the government of Dominica's debt strategy and is being provided on very concessional terms as follows. The loan amount, 7 million SDR, equivalent to 27 million EC dollars. The interest rate, one quarter of 1% per annum. A commitment charge of half percent of 1% per annum, repayment 50 semi-annual installments commencing August 15, 2028, and a grace period of 10 years. Madam Speaker, I submit this resolution to the House for consideration. Thank you. The motion is now before the House for debate, and I'm reminding members again that they must confine themselves to the exact business at hand. Okay? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, before... Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Madam Speaker, before this house is a resolution for the authorization of a credit facility for funding of housing to the tune of $27 million. Now, as stated by the Minister, or the Deputy Prime Minister, Austri, a member for the Cottage Constituency. Negotiations with the World Bank approved an amount of 80 million, of which 27 million is a credit facility. Now, Madam Speaker, there is no dispute that Dominica is in great need for housing assistance for repairs and reconstruction. But, Madam Speaker, we must take note of what has happened and what is happening to housing assistance since the passage of Hurricane Maria. As member for Rosanoff, I've reached out to Prime Minister Skerritt after the storm, giving him my word that I was willing to work along with him by way of serving my constituents of Rosanoff. That attempt was rebuffed. I went to the head of the housing department and I was told by the senior staff at the housing department that his frustration level was great because of interference and the fact that persons outside of the department were the ones actually handling assistance to constituents. Now, in the last sitting of Parliament, I posed a question which was for a written response as to how much money was allocated for the Rosenhoff constituency for home repairs post Maria. And that was the 1st of May, 2018. The answer came one month and 18 days later together with the papers for this sitting of parliament. And I learned that $2.8 million was allocated to Rosanoff, but $2.07 million was already spent. So essentially, what happened, the member for Rosanoff was deliberately sidelined. 
And okay, again, we are dealing with the loan. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Why? This is what the issue is at hand. And what you are saying there is going to open a can of worms, and I'm asking you cease and desist. Okay? Pardon? Well, you see, this is just it. You, 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 we are dealing with borrowing of money. For, 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 no. for a purpose. Housing. You agree to it, you don't agree to it, and why? Yeah. Okay? But, okay? but launching off on something like this, you're opening a can of wounds, and this thing is never going to stop. Madam so Speaker, please, I'm I am saying. asking you, I waited to hear what you had to say, and I am saying to you that this um, part of your debate... I don't think it has to deal directly with the business at hand, and I'm asking you to please get to the business at hand. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I'm saying that we have lessons to learn from what occurred before for housing loans. Well, okay, that's, that's good, and right. then move on. So and then move on. The lessons that I've learned in Rosanoff is that there was partisan distribution of assistance. You are imputing improper motive, member. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? So you, 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 you need to confine yourself to the rules of the house. I didn't make them up. They yeah. are there. It's in a very tiny book. Well, Madam I am Speaker, ruling that you are imputing improper motive. Move on. Okay, so I take back whatever that you said that I was imputing improper motive. I take it back. Now, Madam Speaker, in the possession of Honorable Drago, Minister in the Ministry of Housing, is 246 vouchers for building material, which I delivered to Minister Drago. Oh, my goodness me. What? Oh, I, I don't know. Madam Speaker, it has to do with housing assistance. It's not a carte blanche housing assistance. It is a loan. A loan. It's a loan for housing assistance. Yes. So, okay, and please confine your remarks to that. So, please confine yourself strictly to the remarks to that. Ma Madam, Madam Speaker, I am saying that this request, requisition was brought to me. I don't want, what has requisition no, got to, the member, honestly, I don't, know, I don't know what language I should speak to you. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. Okay. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Madam, Madam Speaker, I said already that I agree that we need housing assistance. Here. Right. Because if 246 and constituents of mine not serve yet, and I still have 100 requisitions, there is need for housing assistance. Okay. There is need for housing right. assistance. Right, and having said saying, that, so okay. I am agreeing that we do need housing assistance. Please, please, if, please, members. If more than 300 members of my constituency is not served yet. Yes, we need housing assistance. Okay. Right. Now, Madam Speaker, there is legitimate cause for concern. Right? Why the member for Rosanoff is sidelined? Because... I remember... Oh, my God. How do I... How do I... Madam Speaker... As parliamentary representative for Rosenhof, I have a legitimate right to make requisition for my constituents. I have a legitimate right. And if that legitimate right is being pushed aside, there is reason for concern for my constituents and for me. Now, as I said earlier on, Madam Speaker, 22 households of Pottersfield await approval. 44 um, households. Um, um, what in has, Stockfarm. please explain to me what that has to do with the approval but of that, a loan. The, that's what the money is for. That's what the money is for, for, to for help 22 members. That's, but, the money is to help constituents. Yes. So I'm saying, you know, based on my request, who for every area, you're not the speaker. You know the speaker. So I'm saying for every hamlet, how much requisition was made for every area? What's, what's the problem with that, Madam Speaker? So I'm saying 44 households in Stock Farm with assistance, 63 in Goodwill, 73 in Forcole, 2 in Belvi Roll, 20 in Yampis, 7 in Louisville, 13 in Tarish Pit, 13 in, in, in Gotha Village, and there are still requisitions out. 
So that is why I support the motion for assistance. Okay. Now, <laughs> now order, Madam please, Speaker, order, please. You can well imagine to all these constituents who are waiting, the whole question of the hurricane season is terrifying them. So what I would suggest is that those requisitions be closely monitored and these people be served without fail. Now, Madam Speaker, I also take note that in the sitting of Parliament, what we are really dealing with are supple supplementary estimates for two ministries. The Ministry of Housing and the... Uh, uh, um, you lost me there. Yes. I'm saying that, Madam Speaker, I take note that in the sitting of Parliament, what we are really dealing with are supplementary estimates for two ministries. One, the ministry, listen, one for the Ministry of Housing, now held by Prime Minister Skerritt, a tactical move by Prime Minister Skerritt. You, listen, are you... following the money. And number you two... Know, Supplementary estimates for agriculture, now the newfound baby of Honorable Austri. Once upon a time, everybody was scared of agriculture, but I appreciate that, you know, you're brave enough to take on that ministry. So, Madam Speaker, what we have here is an election budget. An election um, budget. Look, please, please. Yeah? That's, that's, that's. Member, I really think that you probably have run out of things to say on this. But anyway, I will allow you once you keep to the, the point. I, member, I really think that yes. you, you, you have run out. Yeah. Okay? This is, this is really off the, 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 the grid. It's of the so, grid. Madam Speaker, I'm saying that in Dominica, there are still thousands of people awaiting help. And Rosanoff, which is the largest constituency and the largest amount of people unserved under the housing project, housing rehabilitation project, and I encourage and I encourage the Minister of Housing to look closely at the request for for assistance in the Rosanoff yes. constituency. Now my most vulnerable families affected by Hurricane Mary have not been served. We have Rosette Trocard, who lives... Please, no, no names in here. Please, please, please. A large family. Please. The member, okay? You're dealing with this. It really doesn't matter who the people are. They are known. You bring it to where it has to go. No names in here, please. Okay, I really... But, I don't know. Yeah. Remember, I don't I'm know saying, how to talk Madam, to again, on Shop Lane, there's a family of about 10 people. Their home was totally demolished and they're still waiting on sister. They haven't gotten a nail yet. We have a gentleman living in the actual ravine in Gotha Village. No help for him. So I urge this administration to stop the discrimination, stop the picking and choosing. You are imputing improper motive again. I am deeming what you said improper motive. The member, I will have to have you to a lecture on what constitutes improper motive. You don't. You you are imputing improper motive. Move on. Move on. You can say that. We all got hit by Hurricane Maria. And we, we all got hit by Hurricane Maria. And we should all be served, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Oh, Lord. Madam Speaker. Um, let, um, you were supposed to... Catch my eye and I tell you. You forgot that part, okay? Because you're, you're, you were looking that way. You didn't even see that I was ready to hear you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Quick points. Because, Madam Speaker, with reference to this resolution before the House regarding the negotiations with the World Bank, 
the people of Dominica were advised a couple of months ago that uh, the World Bank had provided a financing package of 65 million US dollars, 40 million of which was for housing and 25 for agriculture and related purposes. I think, Madam Speaker, that this earlier announcement from the government and the World Bank is what is before us today, but the numbers are a little bit different. Where we're hearing now that the housing is $80.2 million, of which $27.8 million is a loan, and uh, 53 million a grant. So 40 million translates into 109, 108 million thereabout. So it seems that the numbers have come down in time when we really need the money. <laughs> so maybe in wrapping up, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister. That'd be good, yes. Madam Speaker, I believe that the, the, the member, the leader of the opposition, should probably await the second resolution, and I believe his comments would be better placed after hearing the second resolution. There is another resolution coming, and I believe okay. rather than read and not read properly, I believe that the, the leader of the opposition should probably wait on the second resolution, and he'll have sufficient time to make those comments when he comes to debate the second resolution. Okay. Speaker, and this will come as a surprise to the members of the other side, Madam Speaker. I have read the second resolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've read it. <laughs> You're shocked, right? <laughs> I have read the second resolution. And the second resolution speaks to the second resolution speaks to an amount of sixty seven point one million dollars funding of emergency agricultural livelihoods and climate resilience project. That sixty seven point one million dollars is in the region of twenty five million US. So it is consistent with the public announcement made by the government and the World Bank a couple of months ago. I'm simply pointing to the inconsistency in the housing component where $109 million was announced, but we see now $80.2 million. That's all I'm saying. So if there is some additional money somewhere for housing, it's to, all of, it's to the benefit of everybody. And that's all I'm pointing out. I'm also pointing out, Madam Speaker, the honorable member's reference to the second resolution gives me the opportunity no, but I, I just want to say this. I just want to say this, Madam Speaker. In the housing provision... Because of the way they're tied up, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing you to make your very brief remark on that question. But it is... By, the, the rules really say that you shouldn't be preempting and so on. But go ahead. I'm allowing Madam you to Speaker, go ahead. trust me. Brief, eh? Promise me you said brief. Right, because I'm saying that the housing provision is 80.2 million and of that the loan component is 27 million the grant is 66 the 66 percent of 52 53.2 million so you have loans at 34 percent under the housing and grants at 66 percent but under the climate resilience agricultural livelihoods projects you have loans at 20 percent and grants at 80 percent and I'm just asking whether this is the best the government could do. Couldn't we get both financing packages at the same 80-20 split? Because had we been able to, to achieve that, you would have had with $27 million at 20% of your packaging, you would have had an additional $50 million or thereabout for housing, which we badly need in Dominica. And just to say, Madam Speaker, Maybe it is not too late that the World Bank can be asked a question about that. Can the World Bank consider at this stage revising the, the split 
between loan and grant, and on the housing, the funding of housing recovery project, give us a 20-80 split, where 20% 20 is the 27 million, the 80% will be $108 million. Madam Speaker, what the matter before the House establishes is that we're dealing with the money belonging to the people of Dominica. Whether it comes from loans or grants, whether it comes from the sale of citizenship, whatever source it comes from and ends up in the custody of the government for the exercise of the fiduciary responsibility to the people of Dominica to help in a post-disaster period. We're dealing with the resources and the monies that belong to the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And so I think as we're discussing this, it is good to remind the government, the people occupying the seat of government right now, that the money belongs to all, the disaster affected all, and all should benefit based on the level of their need. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to be very cautious to this while I was waiting on you. Um, Madam Speaker, let me take one minute of my time to extend sympathies to the family and friends of Dr. Kelsick. Your mic. Please, because <laughs> it continues Nothing to go up on its own. Nothing speaker. wrong with my fingers. I oh, you're, put, you're, you're right. calling me up, Madam Speaker? That's so right. should I say? No, no, no. Well, what did I say wrong this time? What you started saying. Oh, so... Got it now? <laughs> yes, Madam Speaker, with the extent of wind and the extent of ravaging that was caused onto unleashed onto the nation of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Madam Speaker, following Hurricane Maria. It is reasonable to expect that any sitting government would need to move into borrowing funds to assist us in bringing this country back on its feet. I want to just put on record our thanks to the World Bank for seeking to rescue Dominica but more specifically, Madam Speaker, to the International Development Association, the ID 170 countries, which have come together to provide some extremely good rates, Madam Speaker, for these loans. And in this case, we're talking about 70 million and 20 million US, respectively, loan and grant. I want to remind this government, Madam Speaker, that this amongst were facilitated through the IDA. This facility, Madam Speaker, is designed for some of the world's poorest countries. In their own words, for countries at risk of debt distress. And when you look at the countries generally at risk of debt distress, Madam Speaker, they're most of them are on the verge of bankruptcy. So we want to be mindful, Madam Speaker, we want to be mindful that we were placed under that facility because of our present national financial status, and as a result, we must be careful and be prudent with the management, Madam Speaker, of this facility. Also, Madam Speaker, I'm also concerned that if our financial situation is as it is, Madam Speaker, what would it mean for the taxpayers of this country in the near future? Should we be expecting some debt restructuring, Madam Speaker, 
and possibly at the budget, what should we expect? I don't know, but I would urge the government, Madam Speaker, if this is the situation of the national economy and we are challenged, and I would urge you, Madam Speaker, if there are any unforeseen situation in the budget, that the government come up front and discuss it with the nation so that we all can be even, Madam Speaker, with respect to how we move forward with these additional deaths. Because, Madam Speaker, be it what may, this is a debt, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we may want to ask ourselves, how did we end up, Madam Speaker, at the stage of being within the world's poorest nation to enjoy this facility, Madam Speaker? We may want to ask ourselves that question. But, Madam Speaker, what I would, all I would say about that, so that you, keep me, you don't have to keep me in check again, is that this did not happen after Maria. There's a lot more to it, Madam Speaker, and whilst a number of other countries, Madam Speaker, were moving forward, developing themselves over the last 10 years, Madam Speaker, we saw that we were moving to be part of the world's poorest nation. However, the only benefit to that is that we're enjoying some good rates from the IDA um, through the World Bank. But, Madam Speaker, if we're there, we should seek to use the resources to get out of there, Madam Speaker. We should seek to use the resources to get out of there, Madam Speaker. The facility, Madam Speaker, of $18 million can do a great good to the housing component and great good, Madam Speaker, to this nation if it is spent wisely, Madam Speaker. It is my hope, Madam Speaker, that we do not continue business as usual. It is my hope for the good of this country, for the sake of this country. It is my hope, Madam Speaker, that this government take this money and spend it to the best of, all of the nation and to seek to remove people who are out of their homes, Madam Speaker, to put them into proper shelter. I would have expected, Madam Speaker, that in a situation as this, the government would have very likely want to even engage the opposition prior to speaking with the World Bank, Madam Speaker, get their views, Madam Speaker, because when a country reaches that state, Madam Speaker, all hands must be on deck. And anyone who believes that they can exclude some hands from deck, Madam Speaker, will eventually get the results of that. Madam Speaker, equitable allocation on this distribution of the funds, Madam Speaker, is extremely important. As a matter of fact, Madam Speaker, I want to quote from the International Development Association IDA, and I quote, Madam Speaker, the association shares the World Bank mission of reducing poverty and aims to providing affordable development financing to countries whose credit risk is so prohibitive, Madam Speaker, that they cannot afford to borrow commercially from the World Bank. The idea stated aim is to assist poorest nations in growing more quickly, equitable, and sustainable, Madam Speaker, in order to reduce poverty, end of quote. And Madam Speaker, that is what the IDA stands for. And this is what, Madam Speaker, they move into facilitating Dominica. The association anticipates, Madam Speaker, equitable distribution of the resources. Yes, Madam Speaker, I'm coming to this. Equitable distribution of the resources, Madam Speaker, in order to reduce poverty. In the Wesley constituency, Madam Speaker, we have housing need as urgent as any other part of Dominica. There are areas which have received, Madam Speaker, $2.5 million after Maria, just for housing, Madam Speaker. Areas, Madam Speaker, where the housing need, not that it was not great, but was less, Madam Speaker, apparent than that of in the Wesley constituency. However, Madam Speaker, the Wesley Council only received 600,000, and the Woodford Hill Council received 600,000, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, why is the people of Wesley and Woodford Hill and the beneficiaries to these monies are happy about it? But we are aware, Madam Speaker, that it's just insufficient, Madam Speaker. Completely insufficient. That's why, Madam Speaker, I am supporting as well these additional funds. But, you know, Madam Speaker, you know what is, what is terrible about this? This money, Madam Speaker, which was sent to the Wesley, for example, Council and the Woodfoot Council, 
was handed to the council by an ordinary citizen, Madam Speaker. Okay? Posing as a representative of the government. And Madam Speaker, um, that is not even, that's not bad enough. Madam Speaker, that's a statement of fact. It's a statement of fact, Madam Speaker, but I'm not call names because we do not call names in the House of Assembly, Madam Speaker. So I won't call any names. But Madam Speaker, you know what is sad and worse about it? When, we look, when you look to the list, Madam Speaker, $25,000 was allocated to a person who is not even living in the constituency and do not even have a house in the constituency, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, that's not right. Whilst people in the constituency, Madam Speaker, are still out of their homes. And I'm, that's why I'm saying, Madam Speaker, I was speaking to equal and fair distribution of the funds. Because, Madam Speaker, the government should be interested in a situation like that. Because I'm not going to accuse every single person sitting on the other side of doing that. The government, Madam Speaker, and the other members that are sitting on the other side should call up the Wesley Council and ask who is the person that received $25,000 without living nor having a house or was proposed to receive a house in the village of Wesley and in the constituency. It is a matter of concern, Madam Speaker. Why is, Madam Speaker, we have an amputee, Madam Speaker, in the village? Who's also he's still living on the top of the Madam Speaker? A 92-year-old Madam Speaker who has to skip boards in a, in a floor, Madam Speaker, because the house is in poor state. And I'm saying, Madam Speaker, this is not right. I am calling on the government, and I'm calling on the public servants who are facilitating this type of activity that they should stop it, Madam Speaker. They should stop it because this country is ours, and it is ours to build, Madam Speaker. It is ours to build. Madam Speaker, the Wesley Village Council and the Wesley Woodford Hill Village Council conducted an assessment prior to Hurricane Maria, after Tropical Storm Erica, and after Tropical Storm Erica, that listing was updated. Madam Speaker, that listing is available at both councils. I, I want to encourage the government to engage the councils, as I've done before, Work with the councils, I'm again prepared to work with them to now upgrade the listing. Because I want to place on record our thanks, Madam Speaker, to the IMO and the UNDP for the work that they're doing in the West Wilford Hill area, Madam Speaker. That requires an adjustment in the list, Madam Speaker, which was present right after Maria. Madam Speaker, we are willing to sit, we are willing to speak to the government, Madam Speaker, to ensure that the allocation, Madam Speaker, the allocation to the Wesley Woodford Hill community is fair, Madam Speaker, and it is in order. Madam Speaker, I would really hope that somewhere along the line, maybe in winding up, Madam Speaker, that we get a comprehensive idea with respect to how the monies that have been, been applied for in the form of loan and grants will be expensed, Madam Speaker, because it is wide brush. But Madam Speaker, if we receive a clear indication, I'm not even saying a paper, I won't get one, as to how the money is being spent, Madam Speaker. It would help us in the district, Madam Speaker, to call the minister and to call the, the, the other individual minister and say, listen, this was not what you planned. Something is going wrong. You need to open your eyes. Check in the communities. Madam Speaker, this is why the people elected us to represent them, Madam Speaker. When we get involved, Madam Speaker, and we present items through the legal councils, Madam Speaker, I would really hope, Madam Speaker, that the government would take this into consideration. Madam Speaker, without any further ado, I thank you for the time on this contribution. Madam Speaker, I rise to make a short contribution on the bill before the House. On the resolution before the House. Madam Speaker, at this point, I am actually shocked. I am because I figured that we would be here, Madam Speaker, debating the merits of this facility. We would be here, Madam Speaker, debating the ability of the government to raise that kind of funding, Madam Speaker, in these times for the recovery and the reconstruction process. We would be here, Madam Speaker, in a non-partisan way as members of this House, Madam Speaker, Dialoguing and discussing the way forward and how we can expedite the fixing of homes and the removal of tarpaulins and the covering of people's homes, Madam Speaker. But instead, that is not what we are here to do. That is not what we are doing here, Madam Speaker. 
I am hearing, Madam Speaker, irrelevancies from the opposition. Issues that do not matter to the debate at hand and to the bill at hand, Madam Speaker. And not only that, I don't want to impute any improper motives, Madam Speaker, but that is not the situation on the ground. And every single Dominican who have been to Dominica, if you, if you are living outside, and those of us who live here know that every single nook and cranny of this country have been touched by those funds, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, when we look at the funds and how the funds are dispersed, Madam Speaker, if there is a parliamentarian who is not knowledgeable about the distribution of funds, then you are absent from the process. And you have made yourself absent of the pro from the process, Madam Speaker. Because from day one, the hurricane struck on the 18th of September, Madam Speaker. Parliamentarians and even foreign agencies have been out there taking their list of the names of persons affected, taking the names of those homes that have been destroyed, those who have been completely destroyed, those who have been partially destroyed, Madam Speaker. So every single parliamentary representative should have an intimate knowledge, Madam Speaker, of the requirements, Madam Speaker, and the recipients and the beneficiaries of those funds, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there is no parliamentary representative in this country that I know of, certainly on the government side, who have a checkbook of government money walking around with funds in their pocket, Madam Speaker. We do our list of potential beneficiaries, Madam Speaker. It is submitted to the Minister of Finance, now the Minister for Housing, Madam Speaker. The funds are approved through the Ministry of Housing, Madam Speaker. And the funds are made available to the village and town councils. There is no single pirate rep here, Madam Speaker, who have funds at their disposal. Madam Speaker. And I, I heard, Madam Speaker, the member for the Wesley constituency. And I mean, when you speak, you must make sense and you must listen to what you're saying and understand what you're saying. Because here it is, you told us that the monies are going to the Wesley Village Council. That is where the monies went to. The lists that were prepared of the potential beneficiaries are with the Wesley Village Council, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. That is where the funds are. And the funds are being disbursed and managed by the Wesley and Woodfortill Village Council, Madam Speaker. So for you to come here telling us about some phantom person, Madam Speaker, who have money in their pocket walking around in Wesley, giving people who don't deserve it, Madam Speaker. It's not, Madam Speaker, that is not true, Madam Speaker. As, as politicians, more so, as members of this house, Madam Speaker, we ought to be responsible for our statements because the same donor agencies we're speaking about here, members of the IDA and the World Bank, Madam Speaker, these people have their radios on listening to us via the internet, you know. And we mustn't create the impression that the government is wasting money. Those of us who can remember in 1996, 97, there was a hurricane, a freak storm, that instead of going up the island chain, went up and came back called Hurricane Lenny in December of 1999. Madam Speaker, although Mon Prosper was not hit, Madam Speaker, people in Mon Prosper were given materials, Madam Speaker, although the hurricane went windward and only the west coast of Dominica was, was being affected. Madam Speaker, we're talking about Stabex funds. Stabex funds at the time between 95 and 2000 that was given for the banana industry, Madam Speaker. Stabex funds, Madam Speaker, was making ding-dang for all sorts of reasons in Dominica other than bananas, Madam Speaker. I warn you, I warn you, do not open a can of worms, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, when the members spoke, one moment, please. Madam Speaker, when one, the member one moment, please. Thank you. The mem Thank you. Can I ask the member for Roseau North to contain himself? You opened your can of worms. I try to warn you. This you, is you what you do, up. and you do not heed my warning. Okay. This is what you do. 
You went off on your tangent. I tried to stop you. You would not be stopped. The member is responding. This is what you will do. When I try to save you from yourself, you ignore me. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> um, can you use your saving to cool down your voice, please? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Madam Speaker, the member for the Marigot constituency said in his presentation or in his contribution, Madam Speaker, that the monies are for all the peoples of Dominica. But we never had any problem with that, Madam Speaker. Our very motto in this party is all shall eat. And we have been dispersing funds, Madam Speaker, to all of Dominica, Madam Speaker. Even, Madam Speaker, the village council for the Marigot, the village council for Marigot, when they recognized and realized that adequate representation was not being given on their behalf, invited the Honorable Prime Minister to Marigot, Madam Speaker, to dialogue with him. Madam Speaker, that is what we know, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, for the member for the Salisbury constituency to say that he has not been involved. That is not true and that is unfair for you to say. The member for the Salisbury constituency now have housing forms walking up and down Salisbury Road, Madam Speaker, handing out to constituents housing forms, Madam Speaker. So how can the members of the opposition say that they have not been involved, Madam Speaker? And if they are not involved, they have their selves to blame, you know. Because, Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister the leader of this country in his usual fashion of bringing people together and always, you know, trying to bring the country together, to unify and to unite the people, man, speaker. After Tropical Storm Erica, the Prime Minister recognized that the situation, Madam Speaker, was so bad that he brought all parliamentarians together in the house, in the, in, in the cabinet room. All parliamentarians had a say. We sat down, the Prime Minister gave each parliamentarian a directive that you have a blank check, card blush, go into your constituencies and do whatever you have to do, Madam Speaker. But it is the attitude of the opposition that jeopardized, Madam Speaker, that very situation. No sooner had they left the cabinet room, Madam Speaker, they went to hold a press conference, Madam Speaker, vilifying the government. That is the attitude. No work in your constituencies. Offices closed since, since, since the hurricane, Madam Speaker. Cannot be seen, Madam Speaker. So if the members stand here, Madam Speaker, talking about they not being involved, and other persons have taken on the responsibility of managing the housing process within the constituencies, then they have only themselves to blame. But we should be here, Madam Speaker, talking about the benefits of the facility, Talking about monies being available, that's the first time, Madam Speaker, in the history of any hurricane strike in Dominica that we have those kind of funds available to the population, Madam Speaker. The hurricane passed, Madam Speaker. The hurricane damaged. We, we had, we had 90-something percent damage to homes, Madam Speaker. Those who, have, those who had insured their property would have gotten their insurance money. The government, technically speaking, doesn't have an obligation to fix any house, you know, Madam Speaker. It is because we understand the repercussions of not reaching out, Madam Speaker, to the people. The repercussions and the consequences for the economy on a whole that we are reaching out, Madam Speaker, and doing the thing properly. We have housing offices that have been set up in the out districts, Madam Speaker. Order, please. Order, please. Order on both sides. Must look at the, the housing, the housing assistance and distribution of material is well organized, well structured. From the ministry, go right down, Madam Speaker, to the grassroots. Well organized. From the Ministry of Housing, the, the, the situation is monitored, the materials are distributed. We have holding points in the out districts, Madam Speaker, and there are requisition forms. You can't just go to our house and say, give me two plywood, give me four, two by four, give me six, two by six, Madam Speaker. Everything has to be signed and approved. 
That is the, that is the structure and the organization that exists, Madam Speaker. There are checks and balances in place. So for the opposition now to be standing here, Madam Speaker, imputing improper motives on a facility that all of us should be happy about and singing its praises is absolutely astonishing. But nothing is new, Madam Speaker. I think we know that that is the modus operandi of the opposition, but we will continue because the people of Dominica, both in the seats that we hold and those that we don't hold, need the government to come to their assistance. And that is exactly what we are trying to fulfill with this facility. With these few words, Madam Speaker, I, I take my seat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Sit right there. I'll sit there. I'll stand there. Madam Speaker, thank you very much. There is actually a rule that states members have to remain in their place. If they have to come for any reason, they ask permission, it will be granted. Madam Speaker, can I, can I proceed, Madam Speaker? Pardon? Can I proceed? Can you? I'm not hearing you. What did you say? Can I proceed? Oh, can you proceed? Oh, yes. Thank you. I gave you my nod, did I not? The members of government would like us to, would like us to, Madam Speaker, is it possible that my mic sounds distorted? Is it because your mic also is on whilst my, my mic, mic is on? My mic will remain on. It doesn't distort at all. But why is it, Madam Speaker, when this honorable member was speaking, your, your mic was off? Can you allow me the same courtesy, Madam Speaker? No, it's not going off. Continue. This is not right. Madam Speaker, the I world is hearing. And let me just put it on the record that whilst the honorable member was speaking, the Madam Consistent. Speaker's mic was turned off because it distorts the quality of whatever is going on. But the people of Dominica will hear me, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this government would like us to believe, or would like us to simply stand there and raise our hands in support of a loan that was not given through their efforts. This is a loan that goes to countries that qualify for catastrophic relief from the IDA. So don't stand there and make it look as if it's your great negotiating power. What your negotiating power should do is, as the Honorable Leader suggested, which would be to negotiate better terms for the people of Dominica. So, in, so that the, the, the grand component would be greater. But that having been said, Madam Speaker, my real concern is that the member who introduced the bill spoke of the housing recovery strategy. What I'm trying to understand is how does that loan and grant that is going to come from the IDA, how does that fit in with the existing plans that we hear about. For example, I've heard of the building of apartments in Grand Four and in River Street and elsewhere. I have heard, Madam Speaker, and we have here, contrary to what the Honorable Member said, I have here a letter that was written by Senator Josiah Benoit to one of his constituents, indicating that he had received for them $10,000. You see, Madam Speaker, we've had a year a year in which we've observed the behavior of this government. And in all honesty, and I'm not there to bash anybody, but there are lots of questions that have been asked. We are a responsible opposition. Yeah, right. In the last election, Madam Speaker, 43%, 43.6% of the populace of Dominica gave us their support. I am told now, Madam Speaker, that this percent is now approaching 60, based on the polls that we've seen. So it means, Madam Speaker, that we have a constituency, a number of Dominicans who 
And let me just remind this Honorable House Madam Speaker that Hurricane Maria equally impacted all of Dominica. And we've sat down and we've observed, we've heard the pleas of the parliamentary representatives from the opposition side, beseeching, begging, imploring for access, the same type of access granted to the members of government and granted to Mr. Josiah Benoit. The same type. Senator. Senator Josiah Benoit. That's the fair. same type of courtesy. But that has not been forthcoming. So when we receive something like this coming before us today, the obvious questions surfaces. And what I would have liked to see, Madam Speaker, is that this government present to us a detailed program as to how those funds are going to be utilized. They're asking us to sign on the dotted line, or to at least to approve $25 million, which in principle we have no problems doing. But what we're saying is that it would have helped us as an opposition if we understood, and if our constituents that we serve understood that these amounts of money would go equally. So, for example, what type of program, what kind of policy do you have, for example, in determining who receives assistance? Is it going to be done through a lottery? Are you going to ask everybody who has need to apply? Are you going to give PAC funding, for example? Are you going to ask people who can afford to pay to make a payment back to the fund? These are the kinds of questions and issues I would have liked to have seen the government bring to the House to allow us to make an informed judgment as to whether or not we should support this particular provision. So yes, whilst I have no problems, and I, and I commend the government in, in trying their best to seek assistance, and we have been told that monies have been used, for example, from the citizenship program to fund the housing program, because we understand the catastrophic nature of Hurricane Maria. Mm -hmm. We understand the tremendous damage that has been done to the housing stock of Dominica. And as a responsible opposition, we want to see that restored. It is heartbreaking, Madam Speaker, when you go around Dominica and you see the number of tarpaulins that are still fluttering in the breeze. It is heartbreaking. So we want to see good, resilient buildings in Dominica. But we do not want, Madam Speaker, four or five months down the road for people to be calling in their radio program and saying, well, neighbor A received because neighbor A supports the government and I have, I have the equal need I'm not receiving. Let the government of Dominica, if they want the full support of the opposition, give us the guarantee that these funds will be given on the basis of need. These funds will be given clearly, not a matter of apply and then we decide. Let us set very clearly the criteria on which those funds will be given. And if we have this assurance, Madam Speaker, we have no problem because obviously it's, it is good terms. You have a 10 year grace period, you have a less than a 1% interest rate, that's great. But that's just $24 million. Have we made a complete needs assessment? Do we know how much, for example, it's going to take to rebuild the housing stock of Dominica? Is it $500 million? Is it $25 million? I don't know. This information is not forthcoming. So, yes, it's good to have some money. But how far is this going to go? Can we expect 20 units from this? 500 units? That's the kind of information, Madam Speaker, I would have liked to hear from the government of Dominica. So rather than Honorable, um, <laughs> uh, my good friend there, um, Honorable uh, Douglas, rather than trying to chastise us, we're just trying to do the job in honesty and fairness to the people of Dominica. And I know sometimes we feel the urge to play our politics, but quite frankly, now is not the time for politics. Quite frankly, now is the time to serve the people of Dominica. Now is the time to serve the people of Dominica. Now is the time, Madam Speaker, for us to put our best feet forward to help the people of Dominica. And we stand ready to work closely with the government of Dominica to ensure that the people of Dominica live in climate resilient houses, that the people of Dominica get what they deserve. But we understand as my colleague, Honorable Basil, indicated, that there are people who've been impoverished, impoverished under this Dominican Labour Party government. Let's not forget that. That whereas in 1979, for example, after Hurricane David, a number of people could have immediately rebuilt their own home. That's not the situation today. There are thousands of Dominicans, thousands of Dominicans, 
There are thousands of Dominicans today, Madam Speaker, who will need government assistance. They will need government assistance because, Madam Speaker, they've been impoverished under this administration. The thousands of job losses, and we can go on and on. I mean, the, the evidence is clear, Madam Speaker. So, order, please. So, Madam Speaker, and <laughs> again, I would like the government in putting forward this housing recovery strategy to make it abundantly clear to the people of Dominica exactly what this is going to entail, exactly who is going to benefit before it happens, and how you're going to unroll this whole process. I think the people of Dominica deserves this. And that's my appeal to you. And if you can give that to us, Madam Speaker, we'll have no problem in supporting this particular um, appropriation. I thank you. Go ahead, please. Madam Speaker, I rise to make a very brief contribution in support of the resolution, which is now before this Honorable House, put forward by our Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Reginald Ostry. Madam Speaker, I want to begin by firstly thanking and commending this government led by our visionary and astute leader, Dr. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, for their hard work in ensuring that these resources could be mobilized today, Madam Speaker, that we can see continuation of a visionary strategy, <laughs> unprecedented, in which we have set forward the bold objective of being the first climate resilient country in the world, Madam Speaker. And as a young person, Madam Speaker, I really think it's necessary for me to thank the government because you are securing the future of this present generation. I wasn't born when Hurricane David passed, Madam Speaker. But from all reports, Maria makes David look like a little boy. And so therefore, when we listen to our Deputy Prime Minister state that 90% of our housing stock was affected by Maria, I cannot really stomach the responses of the opposition to the presentation of this resolution, Madam Speaker. Having walked through my own communities of Kings Hill, other communities in Rosasov constituency, and other areas in this country, Madam Speaker, the harrowing situations that families face even to this morning as the rain is falling, you guys seem to me to be very heartless and disconnected from what is happening in Dominica. Madam Speaker, to insinuate that we are receiving these resources, as was done by the member for Wesley, because we are approaching bankruptcy? Is this gentleman living in the Commonwealth of Dominica, Madam Speaker? Where the international community, the IMF, the Caribbean Development Bank, is reporting a reduction in poverty, is reporting fiscal prudence on an unprecedented level in our history, is this gentleman living in the Commonwealth of Dominica, Madam Speaker, to insinuate that we are receiving these resources because we are approaching bankruptcy? That is deliberate attempt, that is a deliberate attempt to miseducate and mislead this youthful generation, Madam Speaker, and I cannot sit and watch it idly. We must inform the youth of this country that it is because of the work of this present administration, because of their financial record, because of their track record, of responsible, honest usage of finances in the development of this country that we can attract such large sums of resources. And anybody that can do basic arithmetic would see that the majority of these resources are being given by way of grant. What better could be expected of the Minister of Finance, who already has so much pressure on his back, Madam Speaker. And we, we see someone who is supposed to be an economist I am so 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 therefore I expect so therefore I expect so therefore order, I expect please. order please order please Madam Speaker Madam Speaker the point of order Madam Speaker So Madam Speaker the, the member has not yielded you'll have to take your seat and wait until he's finished you watch your The member 
The member I has not yielded. Madam Speaker, what's your disrespect? The member has not yielded, so okay, he's it taking his seat. Disrespectful, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, order, please. You're too disrespectful, young man. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. On both sides, order, please. Order, please. Madam Speaker, someone who is supposed to be an economist would agree with me that the rates given for this loan financing, Madam Speaker, are very, very concessionary and should be commended, Madam Speaker. That is on top of the fact, Madam Speaker, as I have stated, that we are receiving more finance by way of grant than by way of loan, Madam Speaker. That is to say the, the, the Minister of Finance is working assiduously to make sure that there is minimal, minimal pressure on the taxpayers in Dominica, getting the funds by way of grant. And I sadly remember the time when they used to, to, to these members of the opposition would comment that this government likes to beg, but it's not begging. This is working on behalf of the people of Dominica and the response of the international community to provide so much resources for our housing recovery program shows their confidence in the work of this Dominican Labour Party administration, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I wish to advise the members of the opposition, don't look at the messenger, look at the message. The Prime Minister made the message very clear. Very clear. Our objective as Dominicans should be to work in a united way to ensure that we can become the first climate resilient country in the world, Madam Speaker. And therefore, everybody in this country should be working towards that objective, to ensure that our housing stock is repaired and reconstructed in a way that is more climate resilient. That should be the focus of every member of this honorable house. Yet we, we see that some members of this house are nowhere to be seen, even in the Commonwealth of Dominica. They have taken up responsibilities elsewhere and now returning to this house trying to ask questions. Welcome back, sir. Welcome back. Welcome back. Madam Speaker, we need all hands on deck. We need all hands on deck. And I really want to commend the members of the local authorities throughout the Rosasov constituency and throughout this country. In Wesley and Woodford Hill in Salisbury, working with hard-working citizens like Mr. Shanks Esprit and also Ms. Um, Ms. Afina Benjamin to do the work on a voluntary basis. They are not parliamentary representatives. I withdraw, Madam Speaker, I withdraw. But, Madam Speaker, the point needs to be made that you do not need to be a parliamentary representative to care for your neighbor that the fact that he doesn't have a roof on his house and go and do the necessary work to attract the resources, Madam Speaker. It is not important who delivers a check. What is important is that everybody has a roof over their house before the next hurricane hits, Madam Speaker. And by their comments in this house, I can see that the opposition has no focus on that. They are simply concerned about political points and trying to insinuate that everything that is done in, in, in this country is to score political mileage. Madam Speaker, there's no grandeur, there's no pomp and circumstance in awarding resources to just a small percentage of a constituency. Because the reality of it is that, even if our motto is all shall eat, everybody cannot get at the same time. And so therefore, Madam Speaker, even in drawing attention to a letter that is, that is written to someone to confirm that they will receive assistance, there's no joy in my heart about that, Madam Speaker. Because I think about the hundreds that have not yet received a letter, Madam Speaker. And I say that in this house with my whole heart to those that have not received any confirmation of support, that help is still on the way. As long as there is a Dominican Labour Party government, you will get help. You will get help. And when we pass this resolution, Madam Speaker, that will ensure that many more families in the Roseau South, throughout all 15 communities in Roseau South, and all 21 constituencies in this country can get the assistance they need to repair their homes, Madam Speaker, in this year. And so, Madam Speaker, I just want to say that leadership is everything and that I will continue to take a note from the leadership of this party, our Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerido, Prime Minister, from his members of cabinet who are remaining focused since the passage of Maria and to do my best on the ground 
as a volunteer, working with the local authorities and with any willing citizen that I can to make sure that we achieve the objectives of this housing recovery project, Madam Speaker. With these few words, I want to give my full and unwavering support to this resolution. Thank you. Um, what, what are you going to tell you up there now? I'll tell you how very good I'll heal for you. Change that time. Change that time. Go ahead. Change that time. Um, the, okay, I... Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I rise to make um, a few brief comments on the resolution before the House, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, um, First, I just want to talk, um, touch on the, the figures. I don't know if we have some discrepancies. While looking at the figures, I saw we have a conversion rate of 2.89 and 3.86 somewhere. So I don't know if it's um, some errors. I heard Mr. Linton make mention of it and, and even Mr. Basil. So I don't know if you look at the figures. I get in um, 107,000 with the conversion. I don't know if it's a conversion error we have. So we can look at it. Um, yes, um, Madam Speaker. Yeah, I, I saw that somewhere. Um, on the resolution, it said, this credit facility is to assist the vulnerable citizens for reconstruction and replacement of homes damaged by Hurricane Maria to improve the housing stock in an effort to adopt resilient building practices for better and stronger homes. Madam Speaker, I am in support of that 100%, Madam Speaker. That is, what, that is where we should be. That is where we should be going. Yes. Madam Speaker, that is what is set in the resolution. Yes. And, Madam Speaker, in, in principle, that is what we would like to see happen. But earlier on, Madam Speaker, I heard the, the, the member for Portsmouth saying that the member of, um, for SOURS rehab forms around the community giving out, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I just want to touch a few areas because that funding, Madam Speaker, we support is for everybody. And the minister made it very clear, it's 90% of our housing stock. In Salisbury, we have an upper part of Salisbury they call Tapive and Kulibi Street, got a lot of um, houses damaged and destroyed. But Madam Speaker, the first day after Maria, I was at the financial center. And I gave a, a report on uh, myself and the Honorable Member for Rosanoff on what transpired in the constituency, showing our willingness to assist. On the following Thursday, the 28th, Mr. Blackmore organized a quick meeting with myself and Mr. Lugave, the Prime Minister, and we gave their commitment to assist and, and see how we can assist in uh, our respective communities, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, earlier this year, I took it on my own, and I went to the Ministry of Housing just to seek information. I met the head of housing, Mr. Jules, and I met the PS, Mr. Blackmore. I also, after leaving there, Madam Speaker, just to ensure that we start that process in source, because there are a lot of vulnerable people, and I see we're heading into the hurricane season. On the 10th of April, the same day at the cabinet shuffle, I dropped a letter with over 40 something names, people from my community, Salisbury in particular, because the Kulibishri village, uh, Monmachet village council did it that area, and I know they made that list um, available. And I brought, dropped it in, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, soon after, I heard there was another list out of people in my constituency. I went through the village council. As the MP, I asked questions about how um, I could find that list, because I know I sent some names in. I was told that to write to the PS. I wrote to the PS on the 26th of April asking about what I'm um, going on in my constituency. Because that fund, that, that assistance is for, for, for the constituency. I'd like to know as the MP, if people ask me a question, I can answer. I, I wrote, I have not received a, a response from the PS. Last week, the minister is right there. The minister, um, in the, the minister in the Ministry of Housing, I went to him about it and we raised that same letter and concerns. And he told me, to go back to my constituency and make sure we get the assessments form and get them sent in, the, the, the people got affected. So I was doing that, and we were doing that in the interest of our constituents. And when people saying that we, when the minister 
um, the, the parallel proposed for the saying that we did nothing, we never tried to get involved. It's unfair to us on the side. We was isolated. We were sidelined. You have people calling. You have um, Mr. Sabino called name. Nicholas Esprit has papers and pe telling people who should get money, who didn't get money. I have a concern. I even went to the minister um, for ecclesiastic affairs. Uh, in my um, serious concerns, in my concerns, Madam Speaker. Um, remember, you yourself pointed out no name calling. Okay, Madam Speaker. Um, it, it was done, so I, I, okay, I will refrain. Sorry, Madam Speaker. Uh, okay. But the point I'm bringing, Madam Speaker, we want to see equity. We want to see fair distribution. We want to see paper trails. We want to see transparency. That is what we'd like to see. Madam Speaker, I made reference, I will, make, I will call this one the Madam Speaker. He's the former parish of Salisbury. He's 93 years old. Even before that came out, I made representation to Mr. His Excellency Honorable Henderson. He was head in relief. And I told him one person I'd like you to assist for me is Honorable Bryson Louis. He's, he's a former parish for Labour Party in Salisbury. He's still alive. No, Madam Speaker, I, I recall that he's a mem former member of parliament. That's why I'm calling his name. And today, I, I, was, I went by him yesterday. IOM is going to do his roof for him. But he has resources that they put in the, in the village council for him in Kudibishu, and he could access it. And he would like to do his repairs. He have, it's not to say he has the, the modern houses. He has a house where the, the second tier is, um, is wood. So the water is going on. So it's, it's, it's affecting him. It's stressing him out. I use that example, Madam Speaker, and other examples... In the constituency, there's a gentleman living under the credit union in Salisbury. And his name is on that list. If we had the materials, we'd get code men do it for him on the, on the weekend. We have a family living on the river bed in Kulibi Street. And these are genuine people. These are genuine concerns. We are raising, we are going to see that money we are getting from the uh, thing under the IDA. Uh, there's equity, and we can get these people there, get the assistance that they need, Madam Speaker. So we, and on this side, we are saying we support what is, um, the funding, we are thanking the World Bank, but we would like to see the equitable distribution. We would like to see the working together with international agencies like IOM. And then, Speaker, we have a serious concern as well. If IOM had the information, we have duplication is going on in the constituency. We're not against anybody receiving what they, what, what they get, but there are duplications going on. And we have to work with them to ensure that we have that, that networking, that effective network where we can, everybody can get the assistance and not a set getting more than others. And while we have others, they're waiting. We are in the hurricane season. Over the weekend, a lot of us experienced heavy rain and wind. And there are some people who are still on the tarpaulin. There are materials available. Let us see. There's about, I'm hearing there's about 14 containers of um, galvanized. Distribution started last week. Let's get some of the galvanized to the people that really need them. Quickly and quickly. And that is what the materials. In, in my constituency, I'm asking, I'm pleading that Salisbury, Kulibi Street, Monorachet, get the fair share and they get it in a, in, a, um, in a matter of urgency. Madam Speaker, as I, I, I wind up on, the, on, this, on my contribution, as I said earlier on, we would like to see that level of um, distribution across the board. We welcome the assistance from the World Bank under the IDA. Um, very good reads. I, I went and did some research and I saw it's, it's common around the world that they give some of the world poorest developing countries that type of support. We welcome it and we'd like to see um, it happen in the quickest possible time that people can feel that level of normalcy um, in that upcoming hurricane season. Thank you for my country. Madam Speaker, I, I rise to support this motion before this Honorable House. I think and this, this measure ought to have been a very simple measure. And really and truly should not have really generated a very prolonged debate before this Honorable House. But I, I, I stood, Madam, I'm standing here, Madam Speaker, to, just to, to um, refute some elements of the contribution that was made by the member for Wesley and also. <coughs> Doctor, doctor slash tourist Fountain, Senator Senator Fountain. Um, Madam Speaker, 
Hey, he's a, he's a tourist. Uh, a very expensive one, too. Madam Speaker, let me just say to this honorable house, in very clear and simple terms, that no other government in office post a major hurricane has done as well as the Labour Party administration, Madam Speaker. Let the record reflect that, Madam Speaker. I listened to the member for Portsmouth, the Minister for, for Trade, and he made reference to hurricanes during the 90s. Hurricane Lenny. But I want to go back to Hurricane David. And most of us, there were few, with a few exceptions, Senator Benoit, who was not born yet, we were growing up. And we were old enough to recall now what transpired then. Because the member for Wesley, who was not there now, spoke about, and sorry, the Senator Tom Fontaine made reference to how nice things were after Hurricane David. He, Madam Speaker, with all fairness, made some valid points. But when he made that point, Madam Speaker, he was literally not talking the truth. Literally not talking the truth. Because I can recall after Hurricane David, and most of us can, that you were left almost on your own, Madam Speaker. Yes. That's the reality. That's it is therefore disingenuous to come in this honorable house and create the impression like everything was nice. I heard somebody told me, you know, after Maria, Madam Speaker, they made reference to that, so I have to refer to it. That after Maria, nice Russian. Port Madam Speaker, no young person nowadays would it come be harsh for you now, Madam Speaker. No. That's what we got. So, Madam Speaker, let's go back to the measure before this honorable house. So, Madam Speaker, the opposition has found itself in a serious dilemma. The opposition has been in, re in retreat, Madam Speaker, and is finding a way to come back. And they are very confused. But Madam Speaker, for the country's sake, and for our sake, and for the good of humanity, Madam Speaker, we must see this housing situation as a national crisis, Madam Speaker. And therefore, all of us, together, must come and support this measure before this honorable house with no reservation, Madam Speaker. So, you cannot be for some part of it and against some element of it, Madam Speaker. When the member for Wesley says to this honorable house with a straight face, and Madam Speaker, I always marvel when somebody put on a pair of spectacles. Once somebody does that, the person is serious, the person is bright, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Because when I was small, I said before, I said again, when I was small, once you wear spectacles, you were told that you were smart. Madam Speaker. Because in my days, when I was going to university, I wanted to wear spectacles. Because after 10 years in the police force, you can get it for nothing. So I went to an eye doctor in Canada and I said, I had by, I did not know that I had to go through a prolonged examination. So, Madam Speaker, I was told I have 20 20 vision in both eyes. Because I don't need glasses. But when the member for Wesley, so in those days, you wanted to impress a girl's mother and father, you just put on her glasses. Nothing. And you go. <laughs> and then the mother would say to the neighbor, or oh, um, um, Teresa brought her boyfriend home with a um, neighbor, and he came, and she said, Why are you working now? I think you're working in a bank way, we, and he's wearing glasses, so he's smart, Madam <laughs> Speaker. <laughs> So, Madam Speaker, it's a fact. It's people who, medical doctors, people who do sciences, physics, etc. Those are the folks who wear glasses. That is why you find Dr. Fountain wearing glasses. Because you think it's very bright, Madam Speaker. So when you take your time and you put on a pair of spectacles in this honorable house, the highest office in the land, and you take your hand, not typewritten, and you write your own notes, and you come and you speak such untruth to this honorable house, Something is fundamentally wrong with you. Because he said, Madam Speaker, in his contribution, I'm a song humorous, but I'm very serious. He said in his contribution, Madam Speaker, that he spoke about financial mismanagement. How can the World Bank 
knowing that a country mismanages its finances, makes available to this government such significant sum of concessionary loan and grant to this government, it doesn't make sense, Madam Speaker. That's the proof of strong, solid fiscal and financial management, Madam Speaker. So they have to get it right. They have to get it right. Then they said the country is very poor, no money. But I'm saying to you, early in the process, we started in Mao. Very early, we did all our estimates, it's very scientific. And the monies that we get on every constituency yes. came from local funding, Madam Speaker. We have spent, we have spent, this administration has spent in excess of $50 million to help people to repair their homes. That's local funding. Is that evidence or indicative of a government that is financially trapped? The answer is no. But again, these guys are in retreat. They're in retreat. And they must make up their minds whether they're serious or not. And one of the most practical ways, Madam Speaker, to get serious is to go back to your respective constituency offices and represent the people who have elected you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, politics is serious business. It is a, even a greater contact sport than boxing. And boxing, you can relax in the ring, but you cannot do that in politics. You cannot do that. For it's nothing like hiding, and the member for us enough. Once I saw him come inside David Long's shirt, I said, well, today's trouble. I said, today's trouble. You're a little big for him, today's trouble. Madam Speaker, sorry, Madam Speaker, we have to get serious in this place, you know. And the Rosa member for not Rosa North, he made reference and spoke about housing, etc. But he's, and I, I want my colleagues to know before, when they're making a big joke and, and took it in a very flippant manner, what the member for Rosanoff said, that he doesn't have money, he is hungry, send money for him. I want all of them, I said, do not fall for that. You know what they call a reverse psychology? He was using reverse psychology on his constituents. He was saying to them, do not come to me, I don't have money to give you. Oh. That was the same as oh, okay. And we misconstrued what he meant. Um, um, I don't think you should say that. Eh? Please withdraw that. Madam it's, not, it's not really um, okay, Madam Speaker, imputing improper motive. One thing with Mao fellas, we don't hesitate to take things back. So I take that back quickly, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, in closing, I think that this government must be applauded in the circumstances. It's going to be anyone who says to you, Anyone who says to you it's going to be easy in the next years is not talking the truth. Those of us who are around during Hurricane David and persons who work during, during that era within the Ministry of Agriculture will tell you how many years it took agriculture to get back on its foot. Around eight years, eight. Madam Speaker. Eight years. We'll tell you how long it took people to get water, water into the homes over three years. It will tell you, Madam Speaker, I can tell you, I live in Maho, I can tell you how long it took us to get water in Maho. So don't just come here and say, like after doing Hurricane David, that things were so nice. I think in the circumstances, Madam Speaker, much more work to be done. We have done well in the circumstances, Madam Speaker. And we can do better in the circumstances if every member of the United Workers Party in Parliament Join hands with us to move this country to make it the first climate we see that country in the world, Madam Speaker. My age right now, Madam Speaker, I hold nothing against anybody. I think we as politicians, in last measure, are behaving like children. Children, at, a time, at our lowest point in our development, we cannot come together. At our lowest point, Madam Speaker, we cannot agree that housing is the most urgent need and join hands with the best administration in the history of this country to move the housing sector forward. They want to support it. Senator Thomas Fountain wanted to support it. I know him very well. I can recall in 2007 at the, at the then president office, I was taking notes, I still have the book, and he laid down on the table how many persons should be made, made um, 
ambassadors, and who should be giving um, diplomatic passport on the side? Uh, I can recall that. Uh, okay, yes, it's a fact. Uh, you say yes, I'm uh, written down. So, Madam Speaker, I can, no, I can sit down. Madam Speaker, on a point of order, that, that never no, happened, no, no. Madam Speaker. Um, a point of Madam order. Speaker, I mean, come on. Come on. Just one moment. Please, please, no crosstalk. Madam Speaker, on a point of correction, Madam Speaker. No crosstalk on a point of correction. order. Or you, or you, or well, you, point you change your point of correction, Madam Speaker. Okay, what, oh. what part stand in order, point of order? On the point of order, Madam Speaker, I would like to make a correction to what he just said. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. You've not been here long enough, but this is how it operates. Okay? <laughs> if it's a point of order, you have to say the order, and then you proceed to say the infringement. But if you, it seems to me you're rising on a point of correction, point of which correction, has nothing to do with a point of order, and your colleague has sat, so you are free to say yes, it. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Honorable Blackmore, um, this is absolutely incorrect. I never, ever your, gave your... that information that you, you say that I gave about diplomatic passports and so on. That is completely incorrect, and I would like you to withdraw that, sir. For the speaker. For the highest okay, respect. he's responding, so yeah, you. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I have the highest respect and regard for Dr. Thompson Fountain. But please, sir, don't, don't do that. I'm saying to you, I do not throw things. Okay. And I'm saying to you again in this honorable house. Through the chair. Through your mouth, Speaker. I prefer to look at the woman than a man. So let me show that to you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> for your Madam Speaker. For your Madam Speaker. Straight for your Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, may you still rest in peace. The then President, along with the Prime Minister, I was the Minister in the Prime Minister's office. I had a blue book. Okay. Not red. Blue. No. Admon Bruce in the President's office. He, along with two other persons, I think oh, was a doctor. Oh, oh, oh. In the, in the military, not Dr. Christian, some other guy. At the time, they were friends with us, very good friends. Uh -oh. And he laid on the table persons who could, could be made high commissioners and ambassadors. And I have that recorded. And I will make it available. No, at the next sitting of this honorable, if you want to expose yourself, so you are doctor, you know. No, yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you want to expose yourself, that's your business. But I wanted to let the debate continue and sit down and let me, let me continue. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, on the point of correction, Madam Speaker, well, again. This time he hasn't yielded, so you'll have to take your seat and, and say no, what you I have to say after. He's not yielded, seats. you have to sit. He's not yielded. But why are you not yielding? Can you please No, no, yield? well, you, you can't force him. It is his turn. So this is how we, we do it in the House. The rules say so. Continue, Member. Thank but you, Madam you Speaker. Digress so, Madam Speaker, in concluding. Okay. Right. The Member, the Senator, um, Fountain, in my view, made a, made a good contribution, except for the few laws. And I think that you must support, all the members, not some, must support this bill, this measure, in full, not in part. And Madam Speaker, I will say to you that in order for us to build a resilient country, resilience has to start from the community level and from the homes. And therefore, Madam Speaker, you must have resilient homes. I was sorry, Madam Speaker, first. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you that we have to ensure, and we will ensure, that the houses meet the standards so far as this building code is concerned. That the houses are constructed in areas that are not vulnerable, and so forth. So I think that's reasonable, a reasonable contribution to make in these circumstances. So Madam Speaker, I support this measure, and I must say, Madam Speaker, the member for us is not there, but $65 million from the World Bank at a time when a country is at its lowest point, cannot be seen as a government that mismanages its finances, Madam Speaker, but a government that manages its finances and manages the affairs of this country, more so post Maria, Madam Speaker. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I stand to make my contribution to the resolution before the House. I also wish, would like to stay at the very beginning that I support the resolution that there is need for housing assistance to this country. What is the problem I have with the resolution 
and the, present, when, and the way it, is, it was presented by the Minister, the acting, sorry, the um, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of, of Agriculture, is the lack of detail and specificity as, to, as to the, the way the money will be utilized. The brief notes I made on the measure, um, as presented by the Honorable Minister, is that the funds of $80 million, most, um, $27 million of which will be um, loan financing at very concessionary, concessionary terms, and I applaud that as well, is that it will go to new housing, and he mentions vulnerable, vulnerable groups, repair to, new, repair to the new standards of the planning authority, recovery of a technical response team in the community's management and on an office to manage the program. And most importantly, he said that new housing in the region of 1,700 units at a maximum ceiling of $42,000 will be given as grants. And there will be a project implementation office. Madam Speaker, looking at the measure on the surface of it, you're asking yourself how. You have received $80 million. You are proposing to provide housing to vulnerable groups, and I would like to refer, because in the lack of a national housing plan post-Hurricane Maria, I can only depend on the policy statements issued by the, prime, by the government with respect to housing. The question was posed in the last parliament. Um, will the Honourable Minister inform this Honourable House of government's housing policy for the equitable distribution of housing assistance to homeowners whose homes suffered damage during the passage of Hurricane Maria on 18 September 2017? This measure is as a result of the damages, so it's in, it's in context. The response was this. Two distinct approaches are proposed for the undertaking of the repairs and reconstruction interventions for ensuring that the restoration is in a sustainable and desirable manner. Based on the analysis of the building damage assessment undertaken, the government has considered giving priority to the following targeted vulnerable groups. Elderly, households headed by single women, persons with disabilities, persons living in shelters, persons without insurance coverage, and persons who have lost their jobs or livelihoods. I am therefore to assume, Madam Speaker, this is what will be guiding government's decision making as to the utilization of the funds that we are, we, we are de um, now um, debating. The question of providing 1,700 units, units based on houses damaged at $42,000 maximum only comes up to 6.8. Six million eight hundred thousand, or only eight point four percent of the amount that's in here allocated for for the housing for housing. Based on construction costs today, Madam Speaker, even at the time when assessors were looking at the housing situation, they considered, and it is true, two hundred dollars per square foot for housing, new housing, it's it's too low. That was before construction costs went up tremendously. So when we do the calculation, even at $200 per square foot, you are in effect saying that the government is proposing to provide 210 square feet size houses based on the information being given there to persons whose homes have been destroyed. The government says that, okay, we expect them to complement or supplement that, for, that um, 42,000. But the majority of them, you recognize that they are the elderly. They do not have an income. The single um, parent household women, most of them lost their jobs. In other words, the vulnerable groups that you said that you are targeting here do not have the money to supplement and complement the $42,000 you are providing. We need an explanation. Why it is that you're getting $80 million, the bulk of which comes in grants that you do not have to repay, and you're only providing $42,000 to persons to provide housing and new housing at a time when construction cost has gone up, everything is up. And we advise the government, because of the situation of the construction industry right now, you should provide duty-free concession over an extended period. You should put the cost of material, billing material, basic material under price control so that the price can go down and know that the supplement that you're giving it, the people can realize a better home. 
Let me just show you what this what two, 210 square feet space is basically a bed sitter. Even too small for a bed sitter. Because if you say according to you that you're going to build according to planning standards, then the planning department requires that your floor space be not, not less than 90 square feet for a, be for a bedroom space. You need at least 36 to 40 square feet for, for the bathroom. You have 48 square feet, which is too small for a kitchen. You're only left with, a hundred, with, with 40 square feet for living space and dining space. So I am advising this government that the proposal to provide $42,000, given that you have $80 million, is inadequate, grossly inadequate, to provide reasonable tax assistance to housing. In fact, when, I, when, we, we do, when you do the calculation, the figure should always should average about 78,000 based on the amount you have available. But I understand that the government cannot give everybody, and, you are, and, and, and I support the idea that you must focus on the vulnerable groups. However, the assistance has to be reasonable. The assistance has to reflect the situation on the ground. Your program and this, this, this assistance here is not reflecting the situation on the ground. You are untouched. You are not on the ground. You don't understand what's going on. And get, your, get, get the information right. So I am strongly advising that the, the ceiling of $42,000 is grossly inadequate to provide a reasonable shelter, particularly one that is resilient because of the fact that you have improved, the standards are improved, are increased. Hurricane shelters, you have to screw down your pool lines, you have to put um, bigger members. Then you, you have to provide more assistance for the people to be able to meet their housing needs. Madam Speaker, we also, it's also mentioned that new housing, and again the Minister, Honourable Minister was not clear as to what you mean by new housing. But my understanding that new housing translates in the use of land. In other words, if you're going to provide new housing, there must be a place, a space where you're going to put, provide that new housing. The type of housing is critical. What type of housing are you going to provide in this the member? I do believe that you have gone beyond the scope of the... I cannot hear you clearly, my own speaker. I said I do believe you've gone beyond the scope of your, the, the debate, and I'm asking you to contain that, please. Madam, in what That way? is my ruling. Madam Speaker, it's your ruling, but I have a right to defend your ruling. And I have a right to defend your ruling. I'm saying that the minister is presenting the measure meant to mention that he is the part of the point of view for new housing. And I'm saying that the new, if you're going to provide new housing, the member I have spoken on that. Eh? Oh, really? That's it. That's it. Madam Speaker, the. It will be hard to put on, you know. I'm trying to bring a presentation. Will you listen to the chair, please? Unfortunately, I have the honor to preside in this house. And the rules say that my interpretation carries. Unfortunately, some members may not agree, but unfortunately also, the members have to adhere to my ruling. Okay? And I really don't see why a member would stand and tell me he wants to do this and he wants to do that. This is how it operates in the House. I don't know why the member feels he can do otherwise. Maybe he ought to read the standing. Shall I read it for you, member, or will you take time to read it out? Good. I will do so. On your time, eh? Definitely. I'll tell you something, member. Okay? Be very careful, because certain unparliamentary behavior, there are sanctions to go with them, eh? Here, but I... 
I don't know where this aggression comes from on, at certain times, but... Yes, I'm just, I'm just, um, the member wants me to read the rule in question for him about the speaker's powers, oh. so I'm obliging. General authority of the speaker, standing order 86. Subject to the provisions of paragraph one of standing order 87, the members, please, I'm trying to ensure that members understand the rules. I shall start again. Members, please. Subject to the provisions of paragraph 1 of Standing Order 87, rules in case not provided for by standing orders, the Speaker shall have power to regulate the conduct of business in this House on all matters not provided for in these rules. The Speaker shall be responsible for the management and general administration of the House, that is 86.2 and 86.3, a decision by the Speaker whether related to these standing orders or to a matter for which these standing orders do not provide shall not be challenged save upon a substantive motion moved for that exclusive purpose. So the member, you are free to move a motion in the way that the standing order says, but the, would the um, or rules of the speaker are un remain unchallenged until then. I hope you understand, okay? So, well, speaker, you keep, I'm not finished yet. Well, take my time. Take I tend to be long-winded on occasions of, like this. Use print wood, print wood. Use all of it. Your childish defiance no, does not faze me any. Will, will, I said, will, your childish defiance, defiance does not no, faze me your, any. Your, your, your lack of objectivity, that is what is, it is. Okay, promoting. that's it. Okay, that's it. You, 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 you take your seat, please. That's it. I'm not going to stand any insolence from you. That's it. Madam Speaker, can I rise on a point of order? Yes, your point of order being? Standing order? Standing order. Can I take some time to find a standing order, oh, Madam Speaker? Oh, by all means. Okay. Hmm? Do, do you want to make Can, can the other member continue? You can come back with your standing order, your standing Thank order you, after. Speaker. Okay. Next member. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I am continuing my presentation. No, um, uh, no, 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 no. Madam Speaker, no. I have not. Yes, and you, you. I, dis I am disagreeing. I will so not. I, I need to have a right to explain. I have a right to explain why I disagree with you because the standing order. No, the standing order that. doesn't permit you, you to have you a know, right you to explain. You cannot be monarch of all you survey in this house. No. You cannot be. You That's see, what you're saying. You're this saying is it. Of all you you do not respect the ruling of the house. No, no. I respect the ruling of the house, but I'm suggesting to you that the As far as I'm concerned, the matter is over. The matter is over. I, I made a ruling. You, you were very insolent like to me. I asked you to take your seat, and that's the end of the matter. You, no, you can't arbitrarily make a ruling. The member, the member, Rosenhoff was speaking. You pointed out that he was not on. The member, will you please take your seat? Your, will you please take your seat? No, I'm not prepared to take my, my okay. seat because... Um, the members, I'm continue. calling on you, stand in order 50. Let's go, please. I'm not going to deal with that. Going to what? Okay. Stand in order 50, members. 
I need to cut. Member, we are moving a motion against the member. I'm asking the House to consider. You have. What motion okay. about what? On what? On what grounds you want you 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 move? You will hear. You will hear. You will hear. Two members can't be sitting, standing at the same time. I am looking at the general authority of the speaker, standing order 86, 86 3. It says a decision by the speaker, whether relating to these standing orders. I just orders, read it, didn't you hear me? Right. Or to a matter for which the standing orders do not provide, shall not be challenged, save upon a substantive motion, move for that exclusive purpose. Yes. And it's so, a motion the member has to make at another time. It can be made now, you know. It cannot be made the, now. The, well, the next meeting, the member will make their motion. So, That's, the, so the member is not permitted at this meeting or no, any no, other no, member no. to move a, this a motion? A motion is uh, just like this motion. It was, he has to come 14 days before the meeting of the House, put his motion and so on. That is what a substantive motion is. Okay? Yes, Madam Speaker. Okay? Right. So now I'm saying to the member, I'm going to ask the House to move a motion as it relates to the member's behavior. Madam, okay? Madam Speaker, what is my behavior? Explain my behavior. Yes, there has to be a response. What I read, you know, nothing has been said yet. I just don't think the member has understood what I read. But it's my interpretation that stands. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. The member have asked you to take your seat, you, you know. You, you, you have no objection. I've asked you to take your seat. A decision by the speaker, whether related to these standing orders or to a matter for which these standing orders do not provide, shall not be challenged, save upon a substantive motion. You might want to inquire from your colleagues who are familiar with it what a substantive motion is. But it's certainly not to stand here and defy the speaker. I'm not defying the speaker. I, I don't think you understand what you don't understand what 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 this is all well well what well, it Pardon? Yes. But as I understand, standing order 50 doesn't require any action per se on behalf of the House. It, it requires the Speaker having... To name the member. And having directed the member to take a particular course. Yes. If the member fails to do so, then the Speaker has a course open to her. Exactly. So it's not... It's not it's I don't not understand. The he doesn't understand the rules. Right. Stop, 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 stop. It's 
between my intelligence. You, you... Personally, I have every belief that members of the House should be able to address the House insofar as um, that is reasonably possible and be reasonably free to do so. But, Madam Speaker, I understand the point of fairness, but I also understand, Madam Speaker, that most of us are aware in the normal run of life that we may have played cricket, we may have played football, we may have played netball or basketball. There's a referee. There's an umpire. We don't always agree with the, with, with the, the decision, but we have to abide by this decision. And I think that all of us members inside here understand that. I, I, But he's been very rude, rude to the chair. Exactly. This is the key word, distracted. I don't know why the member is continuing. She's identified an You want to see for the best? Give this five minutes left, I'll take the five minutes of the But there is preschool behavior. And I'm saying that even though I have, I have more insight, the fact that one of the first decisions is important for the issue of the land and the development. Allow it. Right, right, right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ. One day. Thank you. Madam Speaker, it's, it's unfortunate that on what is supposed to have been a very simple resolution that even the members of the opposition seem to agree with, notwithstanding the fact that they would play their little politics. And you expect that, Madam Speaker. But it's simple, Madam Speaker, that the behavior of this senator goes beyond just the mere little bit of politics in the House, Madam Speaker. And it would appear to me, Madam Speaker, that the members for the opposition, they came prepared for one thing, but they not finding grounds on what they came prepared for, had to find some other way to display, Madam Speaker, display uh, um, the, the mood in which they came to the Parliament this, uh, this morning, Madam Speaker. But you see, Madam Speaker, we're doing the work of the government on this side of the House. We have people over there, Madam Speaker, who depend on us to assist them in getting out of the crisis in which they didn't put themselves in, which nature put themselves in, Madam Speaker. And, Madam Speaker, we're not going to be this distracted by the nuances of the United Lucas Party. And I, I don't believe that the Dominican people are really prepared to be distracted by the nuances of the United Lucas Party. Madam Speaker, I want to begin by saying, Madam Speaker, that there was, in fact, an error in the calculations in the resolution. In fact, Madam Speaker, 27 SDRs is equivalent to 40 million U.S. dollars. And 40 million U.S. dollars does translate to 108 million EC dollars. So there was a, a slight typo in, in the maps, Madam Speaker. And, it, and Madam Speaker, it appears to me that the, that the leader of the opposition, he took some time, he took some time to read the entire document, Madam Speaker. Because, we, because you know, Madam Speaker, he have a history, he have a history, Madam Speaker, of not reading, of not reading entire documents, Madam Speaker. 
and so finding himself having to apologize for not reading. So I think he didn't take any chances in this parliament, Madam Speaker. He didn't take any chances today, Madam Speaker. So he must have read this thing over and over and over, Madam Speaker. Over and over, Madam Speaker. To, of all the things in the resolution, Madam, in the resolution, he was supposed, he picked up this one, Madam Speaker. So it looked like we really have some work in progress, Madam Speaker. <laughs> looked like work in progress, Madam Speaker. But, Madam Speaker, I would a lot, lot of reference made to the IDA facility, and the opposition tried to equate that to abject poverty and, and the state of poverty, and that's a facility only for poverty stricken countries. Madam Speaker, we were hit by a Category 5 hurricane, unprecedented in the history of the world, Madam Speaker. Not only Dominica, Madam Speaker, where 90% of your housing stock was destroyed. 20,000 homes, Madam Speaker, affected, and 4,500 homes totally and completely destroyed. All livelihoods, Madam Speaker, was gone, whether there's cassava, whether there's toloma, bananas, Madam Speaker, any crop, lime, coconut trees that were standing for 200 years, Madam Speaker, what that didn't fall lost the crown, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, lemongrass, according to the newly married um, senator, Madam Speaker, lemon, <laughs> lemongrass, lem, lem, lemongrass. To the newlywed, Madam Speaker, Lemon Grant. Madam Speaker, on top of that, Madam Speaker, we've come in two years previously from a tropical storm, Erica, Madam Speaker, that destroyed 95% of our GDP, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, had it not been for the astute leadership of Roosevelt Scarry and the caring nature of the Dominican Labour Party, we would have probably been reduced to one of the poorest countries in the world following the heavy storm, Madam Speaker. We probably would have been. And what has happened, Madam Speaker, we were able to go out there in the international community to solicit their support, to plead our case, Madam Speaker, that they open all doors and all windows to Dominica, Madam Speaker, based on the representation made by this government, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it's the first time that the World Bank has moved so quickly Madam Speaker, in making funds available for the restoration of this country, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, people have come from far and wide, Madam Speaker, that all eyes of the world is now set on our country, Madam Speaker, in amazement of how we're recovering so rapidly, but also to assist us, Madam Speaker, in developing a new strategy for small developing countries that one of those days, Madam Speaker, may be impacted by a hurricane such as Maria, or even more severe than Maria, Madam Speaker. So, Madam
I would like the government to please try to make that a little more solid and so on. That is what we, that is what we have done on this side of the house, Madam Speaker. Even before the government money began to kick in, we were already on the road taking care of our people, Madam Speaker. Some of us built temporary homes, Madam Speaker. Transitional homes, Madam Speaker. We built transitional homes. We went to the um, to the to the merchants who had material. We got plywood, they gave us plywood, they said see us later. And we built transitional homes for people who were challenged. Man, ma Madam Speaker, but the opposition, Madam Speaker, no. they sit there no. and they're waiting for when Parliament meets to go and raise their issues so their constituents will hear them. But Madam Speaker, when they have an opportunity to help, they start crying themselves before their people, Madam Speaker. They start echoing, they have no food, they have no house, they have no clothes. So don't come by me because I have nothing to help you guys with. How do you expect people to come to you after you, the member for Rosso North, was on radio? Telling them do not come because you yourself have more problems than them, so don't pass by me, Madam Speaker. Ma 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 Madam, Madam Speaker, a little food, Madam Speaker. We here talking about house. A little food, Madam Speaker. Your leader said he got so many containers of food come to Postmark. He had so many containers from Antigua. He wanted to tell people nothing, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, and you come in here to get a little rice, a little sugar from your stock in your house to give somebody in your constituency. You shut your door on them. You close your door and tell them the ball in the interest. Oh, I'm Danny Luge, member for Rosona. If I want food, I want clothes, I want money. Man, and I'm hungry, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, when you start crying hungry, how come a man come to you and ask you for some food, please? If you hungry, Madam Speaker, if you hungry, publicly you say you're hungry, Madam Speaker. You, your salary, Madam Speaker, has never been cut. You got your money every, at the end of September, October, November, man, and you still get double bubble, Madam Speaker. You got double bubble, Madam Speaker. And rather than tell, rather than tell these constituents to come by me, I will share a little two pounds of sugar I got from my leader. You stay there saying you hungry, lock your door, and, and you put another no trespassing. No trespassing, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I listened to some of the some of the interventions made, Madam Speaker, and to say to you, Madam Speaker, that this idea money is not the only money that the government have for rebuilding and restructuring homes, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we have spent in excess of seventy million dollars so far outside of the World Bank money, Madam Speaker. Seventy million, Madam Speaker, that we've spent. So we're not here sitting waiting for the World Bank money to seek to address the housing crisis that is now in this country, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, and about discrimination, there's no discrimination. Like I said, Madam Speaker, there is money that cannot be used because you have nobody to use it. People have gotten their insurance money, those who got a little they get, they can't touch it because they can't find anybody to help them to, to utilize the funds. So the state of housing, Madam Speaker, is not a reflection of the government's inability or the government's lack of trying. It's a reflection. And Madam Speaker, don't forget, you have Totola, you have St. Martin, you have the United States, you have a number of other countries going for a similar period. So you can almost even hardly get assistance from outside because they are engaged otherwise, Madam Speaker, in their own countries or in their own territories, Madam Speaker, attempting to resolve their situation. Madam Speaker, the member for, the member for, um, well, Wesley was about the poverty, thing, which I think we addressed already, that the IDA didn't come to our rescue because we were, we were considered to be within their portfolio as to poor and poor. They came to us because we made a case. We went to them, we made a case, and they were quite prepared. And, 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 and the, the, the fellow in Sudan is supposed to know that, Madam Speaker. In Sudan or from Sudan. You know, from Madam, he's supposed to know that, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, that, you are allowed that, to call me the fella in Sudan, and I call this guy by his name. Madam Speaker, this is why. Madam Speaker, that is why. Madam Speaker, that is why. That is why we Just a minute. Just a minute. He called me the fella from Sudan, and I cannot call this man by his name. You are too biased, Madam Speaker. You are too biased. And I will call him by whatever name I choose when I stand up next you, time. You have just confirmed. One moment, one moment, please. 
you have just confirmed that when the member said the fellow for Sudan, he was referring to you. So I'm going to ask him to withdraw. If a, if a member says fellow, why would I think it's you? Hey. Remember, made it clear who he is. Yeah, he is he? I you know, mem be before I could do anything, the member bobbed up. You know. But what I, I, I can only ask I asked the member to withdraw. What? Did you? Wait a minute. I don't ask him, Madam, you know me. Madam, you know me. The member have to regard chronology. The mid, the the acting prime minister made a statement. It I have to process when he said Susan, as soon as the member bobbed up, I realized what he was saying and I turned to him and I said to withdraw because I did not wait one minute as soon as he bobbed up and I realized the, the Sudan reference was to him. I asked him to withdraw. What, what, what else? Do? What do I do then? You understand these members? Look. Order, please, order, please, order, please. We have young people outside there looking at you. You members, excuse me, I'm going to say it and you all can get angry. Some members need to remember where they sold their coals and go and shake their bags there. Some members, and I'm speaking across the board. Okay. I will further say. Members, do not displace your anger. Do not displace your anger. Every single time. No, I can't. We are electing members and constituents. Will the members be quiet? Madam Speaker, but, but, but what, what, is the, what is the argument? What is the argument? I the want... the, the, okay, the guy from Africa. One moment, what's please. The, what's the argument? One Monet, moment, what's your argument? the member. The acting, Prime Minister, acting Prime Minister, please. I have to. I not. No, no, no. I, I responding. But I hope you put yourself in a position where you wouldn't get. Madam Speaker, you see the problem. You see the problem. Just a minute. Just a minute. Members of this house, okay, hear what they want to hear, and they do it too often. I am reading something because I have to prepare for the resolution. I hear the member say Sudan. It's thick. Then the member bobs yeah. up. That is when I realized he's referring to him. He made it known that he took reference to it. I immediately turned to the member and tell him withdraw that. So come what on, is the on, issue on, with the speaker? Come on, man. Come on, man. I was come supposed on, to have advan advanced information of what he was going to say. He never called a name. He just, he just put it in his, his speech. And as soon as I realized it, I asked him to withdraw. Let us, let us leave up in discussion, man. Let us leave up in debate. But the member made it clear he took the reference to be him, so I now know any reference to Sudan is the member concerned. Yes. You know, boy, boy, boy. I think, and I say it again, members can get angry if they wish, but you know, sometimes people are angry about the chair and they pretend it's about the shoe. Is the shoe that squeeze in them, but they are about the chair comfortable. The chair the chair. Right? Yeah. The but chair believe you me, it is, it, it is the shoe that is squeezing the their foot. The chair, the chair that is the problem. I'm very about the chair. The chair continues Member, the problem. Member, please continue. The chair the problem. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. Yeah, thank you. Well, you see, Madam Speaker, you see, 
And you see, this, this is the thing about speaker, the members, okay? Guys, they want to say what they want. You warn but them, they <laughs> you warn them self over and over, tell them behave, otherwise you open your can of worms, Madam Speaker. You warn them, they don't heed the member for um, Castle Bruce. Total disrespect, the Senator. Total disrespect to the <laughs> Chair. Not the leader. Nobody could tell him to relax. And not one of them, Madam Speaker, not even the newly married lady, Madam Speaker, who told the member, I'm, 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 the, I'm the fella, Madam Speaker, to relax himself, Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker. You understand, Madam Speaker? None of them told him Madam that he Speaker. was being disrespectful to the chair. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
We have to be acquiring hands, Madam Speaker, acquiring hands to house people, Madam Speaker. And that is the extent of our housing strategy. So to say, well, you want to know how that, yeah, you can ask how it will be spent and so on, Madam Speaker. We'll have to refer to the World Bank on all the plans because that's the World Bank for you. They want to know how you're going to do it. So all the information will be forwarded to the World Bank and it will arrive at the strategy for making it happen. But do not let your heart be troubled. There is more money coming for housing because we have put housing at the cornerstone of this government strategy moving forward in the aftermath of, Tropic, of, of, of Hurricane Maria. But I think the parliamentary reps on all sides, government side, must make the representation impartially. And you must be prepared to, it can be a show, Madam Speaker, it can be a show where you come to the parliament and you start screaming out about housing, housing my constituency. Yeah, right. And when you leave the parliament, you do nothing. Right. You say nothing. It cannot be a show, Madam Speaker. You're not on stage, yeah. Madam Speaker. You have to, the same energy, you come here in the parliament making representation for housing for your constituents. You must go on the ground. You must go on the ground in your constituents. You must walk, Madam Speaker. You must walk. Yeah. And when you walk, do not deny persons who are on a list and you hold back the process because you haven't issued one or two names. Madam Speaker, in this thing in Dominica, one or two people will fall through the cracks. Let, let, let us face it, Madam Speaker. One or two people will fall through the, through the cracks. But you can't hold up the development of a whole community because you haven't issued one name or two names or three names, Madam Speaker. What about the other 50, 60 names, Madam Speaker? And to say to you, Madam Speaker, yes, Wesley Woodford Hill got 600,000. Wesley got 600,000. But that is not the end. That, that is 1.2 million in your constituency. But that is not the end of financial support for your constituency. We have capacity issues. So you cannot jump 3 million and you can spend it, Madam Speaker. You cannot do it. So let us use the first 1.6 million, the member for um, Rose or South. You, you there, you know. You there, you're not saying anything. But we know you there, we see you there. We see, we see you there. It's a pity they don't consult you on anything. You could have asked, consulted you, and you have put them straight, but they don't want you in their business. You want to stay, you can stay, but they don't want you in their business. Madam Speaker. So there's more money, Madam Speaker. So when we use, when we utilize the 1.2 million, then we'll make more money available. And we're we'll using the councils because if we have to do it from the government, it will never happen. There's just too much work. And we have to youth empower the village councils now, Madam Speaker, to assist in the process. But they themselves have their, limit, their, their limitations, Madam Speaker. They themselves have capacity constraints and capacity issues, Madam Speaker. But you cannot stop trying. You cannot give up. Your, and as you go along, you improve the systems and so on. Until eventually, Madam Speaker, we would have completed the repairs to the 20,000 homes and the, and the, the, the 450 homes, which we were on our way to, to achieve it. So, Madam Speaker, in conclusion, I really, really want to thank the World Bank and the board of directors um, and, and, the, and the staff for working closely with this country. Madam Speaker, they have put dedicated staff on the Dominica case, dedicated staff to deal with Dominica because they are convinced that we are on the right track, our strategies are correct, and we're making great progress, and they have no difficulty, Madam Speaker, in putting the financial and human resources behind Dominica to have us achieve the goal, Madam Speaker, of being the first resilient, climate resilient country in the world, and that Dominica's case not, will not be the guinea pig, as was pointed out by some members of the opposition, but will be the template for development, Madam Speaker, of con, of, 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 of con, uh, blueprint, or, or you can say the blueprint too, you can say that too, if you understand what it means, for countries, Madam Speaker, if you understand what, I don't know, what's the joke about blueprint? You, you're just laughing, I don't know why you're laughing, some things you know, spark. But, Madam Speaker, that we, Dominica, will lead the way in the Caribbean and in the world for countries who are similarly challenged, and not many of us are, will be spared, Madam Speaker, because the issues of climate change is for real. It's here upon us. Today it's Dominica. Tomorrow it can be another country. And so we're setting the pace and setting the stage that other countries can follow, Madam Speaker. So with these few words, Madam Speaker, I want to rest my case, Madam Speaker, on this matter. If you start, I, I, you start, you start back. You, you, you start back. This concludes the debate on the motion, but before I put the question, I think um, the acting prime minister alluded to an amendment, and I will refer the House to Standing Order 31-4.
where a motion by way of an amendment to any motion being debated in the House doesn't need notice. Okay? So just to let the members know why I'm allowing it, because he, he did mention it. So it's what you call a perfunctionary motion. Pardon? Yes, yes, yes. He, he has to say, um, you, he moves that where, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Under the, the provision of standard order 31, paragraph 4, mm -hmm. which is a motion by way of amendments to the, to any debate during the debate of the House. Madam Speaker, um, I want to move, Madam Speaker, that in the second preamble of the whereas, which spoke in the previous statement, Madam Speaker, to 80 million um, EC dollars, um, it, it reads, Madam Speaker, whereas the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has concluded negotiations with the World Bank for a financing facility in the amount of 27,800,000 um, drawing right SDR, equivalent to Eastern Caribbean, um, 80, 80, 80, 80 million, that should read, Madam Speaker, equivalent to the Eastern Caribbean dollar, $108 million, Madam Speaker. Right. And it concludes by saying, um, compromising of, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to, to make this amendment, Madam Speaker, okay. to move it from 80 million in the previous statement to under this new statement, to 1.8 million, okay. 108, 108 okay. million. Right. Okay. It, it, no okay. Let me let me see if I can get this straight. Eh? I'll try. It has been moved and seconded that under the provision of Standing Order 31.4, where it says a motion by way of amendment to any motion being debated in the House is allowed without notice that the provision in the second preamble, which reads, equivalent to Eastern Caribbean, $80,228,571.43, be deleted and substituted by $108 million. Yes, That's correct? Yes, okay, so. Yes, no, uh, straight no, no. 108 million. That's what the figures they give me. Okay? So, those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. You're in a good mood today. <laughs> it's good to see okay. you like that, boy. No, but, um, okay, so members, um, I, I now have to read it, okay? So it will now read, and whereas the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has concluded negotiations with the World Bank for a financial facility in the amount of 27,800,000 special drawing rights, equivalent to East Caribbean, $108 million, comprising of 7 million special drawing rights, SDR 7 million, in IDA loans, and 20,800,000 special drawing rights. SDR 2080000 in IDA grants. That's how it reads. Okay? So we're all clear on that. And so I go to bring the motion to the House. Be it resolved that in accordance with Section 3.1 of the Loans Act, Chapter 6405 of the 1990 Revised Laws of the Commonwealth of Dominica, this Honorable House authorizes the Minister for Finance to borrow by means of credit a sum not exceeding 7 million special drawing rights, SDR 7000.00, equivalent to 27 million Eastern Caribbean dollars, EC 27 million on the following terms, interest, three quarter of 1% per annum, commitment charge, half of 1% per annum, repayment, 50 semi-annual installments commencing August 15th, 2028, grace period, 10 years. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The eyes have it. The motion has passed, been passed. Huh? Yes. 
Madam Speaker, I move that this House be suspended until 6 p.m. this evening. Madam. It has been moved and seconded that this honorable house be suspended until 6 p.m. this evening. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. This honorable house stands suspended until 6 p.m. this evening. And members, you bow to the chair, not to Alex Boyd Knights.